Why am I so focused on the biotech space right here? Because in an environment where what's happening in the rest of the world can crush our markets on a day-to-day -day basis, these biotech companies have no real economic sensitivity whatsoever. They're not involved with a Swiss franc. They're not involved with Japanese deflation. They're immunized against the forces that slammed the averages this week. These are businesses where if you do the homework and follow what's happening at the individual companies, you may be surprised by disappointing clinical trial results or maybe a shocking decision from the FDA, but you're not going to be blindsided by the European Central Bank. With that in mind, let me introduce you to Relepsa, R-L-Y-P. That is a $1.15 billion biotech focused on developing treatments for kidney, cardiovascular, and metabolic disorders. Specifically, specifically Relepsa is getting closer to the finish line with uh, Petirimer. Uh, it's treatment for hyperkalemia, or high potassium levels in plain English, a serious medical problem in need of some modern solutions. As the best drug currently on the market was approved in 1958, uh, the FDA is expected to make its decision on Petirimer by late October. And early this month, we learned that it doesn't plan to convene an advisory committee drug, uh, meeting on the drug. And i got to tell you, that's really bullish. The question now is, how big is the market? Initially, we'll have some plans to target patients with heart failure and chronic kidney disease, population of millions, which could potentially make this a blockbuster drug in short order. However, a new drug launch can be complicated, especially since Relepsa has a potential competitor that's less than a year behind them in the development cycle. In short, speculative stock, a lot of upside potential, major risk. Let's dig deeper with John Orwin, the president and CEO of Relepsa, to hear hear more about his company and where it's headed. Mr. Orm, welcome to Bad Money. Thank you very much, Jim. It's a delight to be on the show. Thank you. First, sir, nothing since 1958? I mean, that's got to be one of the most unmet needs out there. It is a very significant unmet need. And to the point you made before about the size of the population, there are between 14 and 15 million patients with clinically significant chronic kidney disease. And of those patients, approximately 20% or upward of 3 million patients will suffer from moderate to severe hyperkalemia. And as you point out, this is an important medical condition to treat. Uh, these patients are at significantly increased risk of cardiac arrhythmia and cardiac death. Well, one of the things that I thought, though, was that I, I, do people know that they have it? They actually don't typically know. <clears throat> it's largely asymptomatic, um, which is something that makes it that much more frightening, I think. Um, but physicians will typically know because they're measuring patients' blood counts on a regular basis whenever uh, patients are seen. Uh, so a physician will usually know that a patient has an, uh, an elevated potassium. But to your point, there haven't been any new treatment options in like 62 years, uh, and that the old option that exists is really not a good one. It's not very well tolerated. It hasn't been shown to be uh, effective in, in clinical trials or subjected to the kind of scrutiny that um, a new product like ours would be. So it's really important to have uh, new treatment options for these patients and treatment options that are well tolerated enough that they can be given on a daily basis because, after all, chronic kidney disease is a chronic uh, disease. Right. So chronic disease, chronic treatment, take your polymer in a powder form each week? That's right. Uh, you'd actually take it daily. Uh, patients in clinical trials took Batyramer twice daily. Uh, it's a powder that you mix with a very small volume of water um, and then you swallow it. And the way it works is that as it goes through the digestive tract, it actually binds to potassium. And so it's taking potas excess potassium and removing it from the body. Uh, potassium is a very important electrolyte for cardiac function and, in fact, um, for human life. Uh, the issue is that your body needs to control potassium within a relatively narrow range. We all take in far more potassium than we need in our diets. In physiologically normal, healthy uh, folks, you just excrete the excess potassium through your kidneys. But as the name would suggest, chronic kidney disease patients have a compromised kidney function and therefore a compromised ability to actually excrete potassium. And that's why these patients are in need of something that they can take on a daily basis that will remove excess potassium and really keep them in what we call the normal kalemic range where they're not at that elevated risk. And that's exactly what our product does. Now, what I took it as very bullish that the FDA did not... Uh, Ask for an advice, convene an advisory committee meeting, because obviously I think that means that the FDA wants to get something for these people if your drug works faster than typically that I've seen. 
Well, my experience uh, working with the FDA has been a very constructive and productive one. Um, it's, it's probably not good to tr try to read into everything that they do, but we're certainly encouraged by the fact that they uh, decided, at least for now, that they don't need to convene a panel. I think the way the product works and what it does is pretty straightforward. And I think our team uh, put together a very uh, quality submission. And also, we conducted very rigorous clinical trials uh, in hundreds of patients to demonstrate both that the product uh, is effective in removing potassium, but also that um, what we saw was a tolerability profile suggesting that it could be used on a chronic daily basis. So all of those things, I think, are uh, important, and I think the FDA's decision, at least for now, not to hold a panel is encouraging. Um, one, one last quick question. You know, I was brought up in a house which, where I heard that too much salt was bad and that you would get a heart attack or you would get high blood pressure from too much salt. You said, listen, most people can live within a band, but is it possible that your drug's much bigger than we think because America eats too much sugar and America eats too much salt? Could yours be the answer for those of us who have been addicted to salt and just desire it all the time, even though we know it's bad for us? Well, many of these patients are sodium restricted, and so they can't uh, take a lot of salt. And that's why we designed our product to exchange calcium for potassium rather than sodium. Got it. So we're not introducing any new sodium in patients, uh, but it's going to be important that they continue to um, limit the amount of sodium that they take in their diet, uh, particularly those patients with chronic kidney disease and patients with, uh, with heart conditions. Well, this just makes a ton of sense to me, and I totally understand why your stock has been strong. Uh, if there's nothing since 1958 and it's a lifesaver, it's certainly the right thing to do. John Orwin, President and CEO of Relepsa, RLYP. Thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys, understand, these are all, all week. I'm showing you things. There's unmet needs out there. There are companies that are working on those unmet needs. And when they strike gold, you win, and they save lives, too, which, of course, is far more important. Stick with Kramer.